in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. I've talked about this before, but it's going to tie in with the sermon that I did here this morning. And I think this is really important, and I need to ask you a question. Do you want more and more of God's kindness and peace? This is verse 2. Then learn to know him better and better. Learn to know God better and better. Sometimes that learning is just understanding God better. Understanding. But sometimes it's like the ten virgins. Notice they were virgins. They were all waiting for the groom. And when he cried at midnight, some didn't have enough oil. Some did. Well, the ones that had the oil came into the feast. The others, they had to go buy oil. And then when they got back, they didn't have any oil. They were the, 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 the door was closed. And then they said, Lord, Lord, open up unto us. And know what he said to those other virgins? And I believe it's the other part of the body of Christ. He says, I never knew you. I never knew you. I was never intimate with you as, I sh as you should have been with me. I gave my life for you. I laid it down. I would showed myself as a true friend to you, but you didn't lay your life down. Those were the foolish virgins. And instead of keeping their lampstands full and being in the presence of the Holy Spirit, being in the presence of God, they had other things that they had to do during the week instead of making time for God also. And he says, you want more and more of God's kindness? Then learn to know him. Know him. Know him. Better and better. For as you know him better, he will give you through his great power everything you need for living a true good life. Isn't that really good? Everything you need for living a true good life. And of course, our mind right, right away goes to things in the world. But I want to read on. He even shares his own glory with his, and his own goodness with us. Verse 4. His own glory and his own goodness with us. His own goodness. God's a good God. Amen. He's a kind God. And when he takes you home, he gives you heaven. He gives you a place to reside. And by the same mighty power... He has given us all the other rich and wonderful blessings he's promised. For instance, he promised to save us from the lust and rottenness all around us and to give us his, of us his own character. That we'd have the character of God. You know, notice that God is love and he said, you'll know mine by their love. But do you want more and more of God's kindness and peace? Do you want to spend time in the presence of the Lord and to know him? Or do we fall in the category of the foolish virgins? The foolish ones that were waiting on the Lord and just believe he's coming back. And then when he shouted, they were not ready. But the others were. I'd just soon be the other. Amen? And I would just as soon be the... The ones with their lamp stands full that walks in the peace of God and the provision of the Lord because our God is a mighty God. Amen. He's able to make a way where there is no other way. And uh, give us his own character. That you would lay down your life for fellow Christians. That you would be slow to anger. Slow to anger. But to obtain these gifts, you need more than faith. Isn't that amazing? Verse 5. You must also work hard to be good, and, and that even that's not enough. For then you must to learn to know God better and discover what he wants you to do. Key. Yeah. Key to your success as a Christian. Jan, if you didn't play that organ, 
If you didn't play that keyboard, shame on you. Amen? If I didn't do what I'm doing right now, shame on me. If you as Christians wouldn't stir the Spirit of God up when you sang, shame on you. That you would sit there as the frozen chosen. Amen? There is no frozen chosen in the Lord. Amen? Amen. They are exuberant, even loud mouthed sometimes to the Lord. Oh, Lord, behold their threatenings, as we talked last week. Behold their threatenings. Look at what the world is saying, and look how they just work Bill over. He's got bumps and bruises all over him. Behold what they have done. Amen? I hope that never happens. But if it does, we'll be going to the Lord, exuberant. Amen? Amen. And we won't be the frozen chosen with our mouth. But we shouldn't be the frozen chosen even right now. We should be hot and on fire for the Lord. Stirring up the gifts of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Amen? Isn't that what Paul said to Timothy? He said, Timothy, stir up the gift that is in you. That when the presbytery laid their hands on you and imparted it in you, Stir it up. You know what he said? It's like a fire inside you. He said that gift that they put in you is like a fire inside you. Bill has some outdoor fires going on at different times, roasting weenies and this and that out there. But, we, but you learn something when you're doing a fire. You got you to gotta push things around a little bit you got to stir it up, and then all at once it takes off. Amen? And that's what Paul said about the gift that Timothy had, that he needed, he needed to stir it up. Stir up the gift that was given to you. Stir up the gift that was imparted to you. Stir up the gift. Praise God for the presbytery, the elders back then, that they prayed over Timothy, and they imparted a gift to him. They imparted a gift to him, Praise God that they had that gift stirred up in them, that they were willing to say, we have something inside of us, and I'll give it to you, and we will give it to you, Timothy. And that young boy, the Spirit of God flowed. Why? Because those guys were always doing that. This just wasn't a a once-in-a-while deal. Well, pastor, what should we do? Well, they say in the Bible, the elders should come to the front and pray. I had that. I actually had them do that one time at a church. And there was nothing in the spirit. It was still and cold, just as they are all week and all week long. I'll tell you what, if the spirit of God isn't stirred up in you, when you go to pray, your fire will be out. Amen? There will be no fire there. We need to kindle the fire. We need to poke the rods in it a little bit and get it going. And we poke the rods in it by demanding by demanding, O Spirit of God, rise up inside of me. We poke the rod in it by singing those songs, by worshiping God with all that is within us. And this old foolishness of just being like the frozen chosen and looking down, look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. This could be your last day. Amen? You could go home to the Lord. People are are dying every day. My aunt just died. It's, it's all at once. They're gone. They make heaven. But were they stirred in the Holy Ghost? That's the question. Were they alive in Christ? That's the question. Amen? Amen. Stir yourselves. Let the fire of God burn inside you. If you don't pray, if you don't pray, when, you're pray, when you do pray, they'll just go right to the bottom. Amen. You say, why can't I penetrate through? Because you never pray. But you start praying. You start praying. And I'll tell you what, the Spirit of God starts moving. And you start praying and you carry the Spirit of God with you. 
You carry it wherever you go. And you get around people and they can feel the Spirit of God all over you. That's what we want. Amen? The Spirit of God stirring inside of us like a stirred in the temple. Solomon's temple, like a stirred with Jesus as he just talked to the crowds. And the guy that had a demon in cried out, Oh, Jesus, leave me alone. Why? Because the fire of God was stirring through that place because Jesus was there. Are we not like Christ? Are we not supposed to be like Christ? Amen? Yes. Yes, we are. So it says, but to obtain these gifts, you need more in faith. You must work hard to be good. And that's not even enough. Then you must learn to know God better and better and discover what he wants. Learning to put aside your desires so that you will become patient. There you go, Max. Patient and godly and gladly letting God have his way with you. Gladly letting God have his way with you. That means there's something for you to do in the Lord. Amen? Well, we would think that would be just about it, wouldn't we? We would think that would be just about it. But he says, this will make possible the next step. Verse 7. What could possibly be the next step? Well, this is where it's at, folks that you will enjoy other people and like them. Amen? That you will make pos that he will make possible the next step, which is for you to enjoy other people and to like them, and finally you will grow to love them deeply. And the more you go on this way, the more you will grow spiritually, the more you will grow spiritually and become fruitful and useful for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Isn't it all about that with you and me? That we would do what we're called to do and we'd march in that? Amen? Yes. That we'd live that and breathe that? Isn't that what it's all about? That we'd stir up the gift of God That we be obedient to God when God does things for us? How many times are we like the two blind men? Jesus met the two blind men. They've been blind, I don't know, maybe they've been blind only for a few years. Maybe they're blind their whole life, probably their whole life. And this is what he said. Are we like these two guys? Let me read. There was two blind men following him, crying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he has come, and this is Matthew chapter 9, verse 28. And when he was come into the house, the blind, in the house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yes, we do. And lots of times we believe God can do things for us. And we say, Yes, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. And their eyes were open. They were open right away. And Jesus straightly charged them, saying, see that no man knows this. You keep this one hid. He took their eyes and he opened them. You know what it's like to be blind? I have no idea. I know just being about half deaf, deaf is kind of like, is a bothersome to me. Huh? What'd you say? Max and I get around one another and we're just right up to one another's ear. <laughs> he can't hear, I can't hear. Give me one of your hearing aids now. But what did he say? He straightly charged them, you don't tell anybody. And this is what they did. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad the fame in all the country. If your Lord is doing things for you, don't you think we just need to obey him? Don't you think we need to just do what he says? Amen. And just be different. How, how, 
willing as the Lord just to touch our lives and say, Lord, touch us, and God touches us, and then we go off doing what we want to do. Now, I don't know about you, but I would think that if I got my eyesight, I'd have held off for a while, if nothing else, being a great sinner, I'd have held off for a week or two and just let everybody, you know, just see. I can see you. <laughs> hey, you can see. I can't tell you who did it. Let them figure it out. Amen? Amen? God is so willing to do for us. And so many times we have the faith to move mountains. We have faith to move mountains. And we move those mountains out of our way. And we go, thank you, Jesus. I needed that to happen. I needed that job. I needed this. I needed that. And God says, but I need one thing from you. And we straightly go the other way. The ten lepers are the same thing. There was nine of them didn't even come back to say thanks. How could you be that way? How could they have been that way? But praise God for the one. Amen? Amen? Praise God for the one that would give thanks. God says, this is all I want out of you. It's so easy. Stir the gift that is in you, Amen. that I gave to you, freely. Stir the gift that I've given you. Stir the gift of salvation that you could spread it. Stir the gift of healing that you have. Step out. He said these signs, he says, he says the works that I do, you'll do also. Didn't he say that in John? The works that I do, you do also. And he was talking to all of us. We need to step out in that gift. Well, I did that one time. Do it two times. Do it three times. Do it a thousand times. Once you do it a thousand times, the Spirit of God will be flowing. Amen? Spirit of God will be flowing because you're, you're stirring that gift up. You're nudging that gift inside of you. Whatever that gift is, if it's healing, you're nudging it. You're saying, come alive. Come alive, O oh Spirit of God. Come alive inside of me. And you lay your hands and you pray. And all at once, the healing power starts to flow inside you. Amen. That's how it works. It stirs. The first time, I'm sure that Jane and Abby uh, started singing together. It didn't sound like it does now. Amen? Amen? But as they sing and the Spirit of God moves, it's supposed to get stronger all the time, right? As they grow older and older and they sing together, I tell you one day I pray that they would lay people out. You might not believe in that, and that's fine, but I pray that it happen anyway, amen? That they would play their music and everybody hit the floor and say, the Spirit of the Lord is so strong. Why not? Why not expect? Why not? As they play that the, there would be healing that would happen and God would show his kindness to this one and that one. Why not? We need to demand. We need to prod. We need to look to God and say, you got to do something special here. Amen. Amen. That they would pray and fast. God, God, when we play today, let it be special in the house of the Lord. That they're prodding the gift and saying, gift, be on fire. Let their ears hear. Let our ears and our hearts respond to their music. That they would pray for us. And that we would pray for them. We'd stir our prayer life up. You know, a person never spiritual warfares. I've noticed that their, their Holy Ghost power is down when it comes to warfare. It is. You want the devils out of you? Out of your house? Out of your surroundings? Start praying spiritual warfare and you get so lethal and so strong. That's why Jesus prayed all night. Why do you think he prayed all night? He was stirring the Spirit of God up all around him. And when he came down, he, just, he walked on water, he did a lot of things. Only according to the will of God, but he did. He knew what he had to do, and he did it. 
That was after he got done feeding the 5,000. I'll tell you if you do this, if you do this and you sow this in, Jesus said that you reap back a hundredfold. The Spirit of God will deliver you. If you stir the gift inside yourself, the Spirit of God will heal you. If you uplift people, in your music, the Spirit of God will uplift you into new heights of faith because you are doing the will of God. Do you want, an, you want more and more of God's kindness? Do you want God to work in your life? Then learn to know Him better. Learn to know Him. That's what it's all about. Believe on me, and the works that I do ye shall do also. That's what it's about. Don't put any limits on God. I really pray to you. Don't put any limits on God. That's our problem. We put limits on God, and we put limits on ourselves. God does this great thing for us, and we don't turn around and say thanks and say, I'm your servant. Behold your servant. We wonder what other thing can you do for me, Lord? And I think Jesus, I think I know God. He's full of emotion. And surely sometimes he laughs over us and laughs with us and rejoices with us. But surely the Lord weeps over so many. And they would not. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Paul says to Timothy. Preach the word. Amen. Amen. Preach the word. Be instant, be ready, be stirred already. Amen. Be instant in season and out. Be on fire as you sit there today and be on fire as you leave today. Be on fire tonight, be on fire every day. Ready, ready, instant. A fire that's burning, amen. Reprove, be ready to rebuke, be ready to exhort with all long suffering and the way to live your life, teach it. Amen? Amen? Teach it. For the time will come, they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers. And I say, stand up against that. Stand up against that foolishness that's being taught today. Stand fast in the open and stir the truth in the face of man. Amen? Amen. Be instant. Have stirred your fire. Amen? Be alive in Christ and not dead. Know your Bible, but know God. You can know about God, but you don't know God. Amen? Amen. Know God. And I tell you, if you do that, you'll be a good tree. Because Jesus says, you'll know them by their fruit. Is your fruit alive? Is your fruit alive? Is it changing lives? Is it changing? Are you changing lives? Amen? Are you a tree? Say, yes, Lord, I am a tree. Where is your apples? And is your apples choking people out? Or is your apples giving people hope? Jesus says you'll know them by their fruit. 
Is your fruit alive with the power of the Holy Ghost in it? How can you have that? Just in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. By you praying and, and stirring the gift inside you. And you say, God, I don't even know what the gift is. How about the gift of salvation starting off? I had a desire as I grew in Christ to know God even deeper and deeper. And then I found out there was a filling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues for this one and that one. I would not stop until the Lord gave it to me and I sought him six months, always, always. I didn't know where to go. And the Lord one night gave it to me through a preacher. One night he gave it to me. But I wanted it. I wanted the gifts of the Spirit. I wanted it. Healing's real. I wanted to be part of it. Amen? Because I knew what salvation had done to my heart. It had changed me. It had pulled the darkness away from me. And I could see in the light. And I kept going for it. Never thinking that I'd be here one day. Encouraging you. Never even thinking that I'd ever be a pastor. But you know what? Without me even knowing it, I saw myself pastoring people, caring for them, going over to their place and praying for them. I just thought I was just a good Christian. I just wanted to be. I wanted to help people. Is that you? Is that you? That needs to be us. Needs to be us. And if it is, praise God, the Spirit of God is stirring inside of you. Hallelujah. And you just expect this to go on with the Lord. You just expect to go on with God, and God will go on with you. Amen? And he won't say to you, oh, go on with you. No, he'll say, come on, let's go. Amen? That's what he'll say. Stir the gift. Stir the gift. Each one of you have a gift to stir. Amen? Stir the gift. Hallelujah. We hope today's message has inspired you. We invite you to join us in person for one of our services on Sunday mornings or Wednesday nights at 715 West Lincoln Avenue in Pontiac, Illinois. You can also learn more about our church and hear more of Pastor Jim's messages by logging on to ChristianFellowshipOfPontiac.com.